what N-P-W-O-D means? Take an A and a C, add T-I-V, then A-T-E, and end with a D. Now, ladies, keep on listening to get the answer you've been missing. New post-war Old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war Old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Patsy, I want you to send Waldo and Scubby to Boontown. Have them kick up a fuss that'll make the headlines. Well, sure, Nick, but what kind of a fuss? Give Waldo $500. Then I want him to hold up a bank and put the money in the bank safe. Hold up a bank and put the money in the bank safe? Yes. Well, that'll make the headlines all right, but how will it help you? It'll help me a great deal. It'll probably save my life. Now, the case of the two-faced Firemaster, today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. Two boys in their teens walk up to a small hardware store on the west side. It's after 10 and the store is dark, but one of them pushes the door open, enter, and walk cautiously to the rear, where a small naked light bulb burns dimly. I'm here, Mr. Gerard. Oh, hello, Jenny. And uh, where's Fred? Uh, outside. You got the guns? Uh, right here. Sweetest pair of 45 automatics you ever saw. There isn't an identification number on them. A hundred bucks each, right? Yep, that was the deal. Sure. Uh, Mr. Gerard, I ain't got 200 bucks on me right now. Huh? Me and Fred, we, we figure we'll have the dough for you in about an hour. If you let us have the rods, we, we, we got a little deal. I see. Well? Okay, Johnny. Here you are. Thanks. Uh, you'll be back here by midnight with the dough. Sure thing. I'll see you later, Mr. Gerard. Don't nobody move. This is a stick-up, you hear me? This is a stick-up. Why, you young squirt, you can't... I told no one to move. Get over against the wall or you'll get the same as he got. Hurry up. Fred, check up the back of the store before you hit the register. Maybe there's something back there. Who turned on that alarm? Who did it? Fred, for the love of God! Yeah, there was somebody back there, Keith. He got your pal. Knocked off that gun. You don't get me so easy. Stay back against the wall, you. Stay inside, all of you. Get that kid. Don't let him get away. Stop that boy. You'll never get me. Not tonight, mister. Not when I got a car and a ride. Pull over there. Now look out with that car. Who are you crowding? Pull over, I said. Get your car over against that curb path. Like fun, I will. Okay, then I'll make you do it. Nick, you get mixed up in everything. Were you born that way or is it a result of practice? I don't know, Brady. Patsy and I were driving down Central Avenue last night, minding our own business. Uh Uh-huh, we just finished the Kendall case, Sergeant. And that was the moment when Johnny Macklin came tearing out of the place and jumped into his car. And someone from the store yelled, stop him. And I was the closest, so I cut him off. Nick, why should you be interested? One kid's dead. We've got the other one cold for attempted robbery. There isn't any case. It so happens, Brady, that there is a case. Oh, yeah? The guns the boys used. What about them? Every identification mark and serial number has been removed. And in a professional manner. So what? Somebody's in the business of preparing and selling firearms to crooks. And potential crooks, Brady. That somebody's got to be put out of business. Mm, You're right about that. So, with your permission, I'm cutting myself into this deal. Okay, Nick. Where are you going to start? Going down to the hospital for a talk with Johnny Macklin. Johnny, I want to know where you got that gun. Ah, go fly a kite. 
Now listen, Johnny. The man who sold you that gun is as much responsible for the jam you're in as you are. And I want to know his name. Ghost Graham. You know, I can trace the gun. Like fun you can, there ain't no number on it. I said I can trace the gun and I can. And I can get the man who processed it and sold it to you. And you can save me a lot of time if you'll answer my questions. It'll make things easier for you, Johnny. You can't trace that rod and you know it. You're bluffing. You think so? Let's have the lab kit, Patsy. Right here, Nick. You see, Johnny, the serial numbers are stamped into the metal of a gun. And they're stamped with a lot of pressure. But even if someone very carefully removes those numbers with a file and acid, they can't change one thing. What, for instance? The fact that the stamp has hit the metal so hard, it's permanently changed the crystalline structure of the metal. What do you mean? I mean that I can drop some of this chemical reagent on the gun where the serial number was originally. Like this. I'm watching. And you'll see the original serial number of the gun, your gun, showing up. Fuzzy. But distinct enough to read. You mean... There. See? Y284 37. For the love of So he lied to me. The dirty, lousy, crooky lied to me. Who is he, Johnny? Pop Gerard over on 10th Avenue, the Gerard Hardware Store. Go get him, Mr. Carter. <laughs> Brady, Nick. What you got, Nick? I've located the man who sold Johnny Macklin his gun. Great. He's a man named Gerard who runs a hardware store on 10th Avenue. Gerard? But I've got a hunch Gerard's only the salesman. So what? I want the manufacturer. Sure, but how are you going to get him? Going over there and place an order for guns. Big enough to stir things up. And when I order them in my best gangster voice, it's going to start things popping. I hope. <laughs> That's me, mister. I got 200 bucks for you. 200? Right here. Fred and Johnny sent their regards with the dough. Fred and Johnny? Smart, don't you get it? They pulled a nice job last night, but they figured it'd be safer maybe to lamb out of town. So they sent me with the dough. Uh, what's your name, mister? Kane. Nels Kane. From St. Louis. You don't know me. Well, I'm much obliged, Mr. Kane. Listen, Gerard, I like the way you did business with the kids, so I figure maybe you and me can make a deal. Yeah? How much for 40 belly guns? 38s. 40? And maybe a Thompson gun, too. Mr. Kane, that's one big order. Well, I run one big organization in St. Louis. Uh, well, uh, I'll see what I can do, Mr. Kane. Unfortunately, I can't let you know right away. Look, Gerard, ain't that uh, no time. Suppose you could come back this afternoon at three. Uh, I'm sure we can do business together fine, Mr. Kane. Real fine. <laughs> Patsy, I think we're in. Is Gerard your man, Nick? No, my hunch was right. He's just a salesman. So I gave him a big order in my best gangster dialect, and he said he had to find out whether Mr. Manufacturer had enough stock to supply me. And? I'll get to the manufacturer through Gerard this afternoon. Uh-huh. Oh, golly, I forgot. Brady called ten minutes ago. He said you asked him to keep the story quiet. I did. Well, one of the police reporters got hold of the boy's name. Oh, for the love And they'll be in the paper tonight. Oh, Nick, if Mr. Manufacturer sees it, your case is shot. That's no lie. What do you do now? Well, I don't know. I only know I've got to find out who's supplying the underworld with guns. Now for my next question. How old is your firm, Mr. Valence? Rodney Valence Incorporated is 75 years old. I'm the third Rodney Valence to head this old and respected firm as Firemaster. Firemaster? What's that, Mr. Valence? 
The Firemaster invention creates the new types of fireworks that are manufactured each year. Oh, that's very interesting indeed, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Vallon. Uh, yes, Linda? Mr. Gerard to see you. He says it's urgent. Uh, very well, my dear. If you'll excuse me a moment, Mr. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Valance. I'll wait here. Well, Gerard? I think we got a new customer, Mr. Valance. Uh, come to us through uh, Johnny Macklin, who was sent to us by one of our best customers. Who is he? man named Kane, Nels Kane from St. Louis, wants 40 guns in the Thompson. 40? Mm. Yeah, quite an order. Yeah. Uh, there's just one thing, Mr. Valens. Yeah? I uh, don't know this Nels Kane. Never seen him before. Never even heard of him. And we must be careful, as always. Uh, check the files, Linda. Yes, Mr. Valens. Huh? Yeah. No one by the name of Nels Kane listed here, Mr. Vallon. Uh, nevertheless, such an order is rather too large to throw away on mere suspicion, eh? That's the way I feel, Mr. Vallon. Uh, I'll tell you, Gerard, we'll arrange to test the gentleman's integrity this afternoon. It'll be a simple test, but <laughs> very effective. <laughs> Well, now that Johnny and Fred's names will be in the newspapers and Valance is already suspicious of his new customer, it looks as though Nick Carter may be up against a tough problem. We'll see how he meets this challenge in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the two-faced Firemaster. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. For the past hour, Nick has been engaged in his favorite pastime while thinking. He's throwing darts at a target set up in his office. Finally, however, Patsy just can't stand not being talked to any longer. Nick, haven't you thought of anything yet? Patsy, I guess I'll just have to go ahead and take a chance. Hmm? Maybe Gerard and Mr. Manufacturer won't see the hold-up story in the paper until it's too late. Maybe. In the meantime... I have a plan that may help. Oh? Tell Walter to pick up Scubby and fly out to Boontown at once. Okay, but what for? That to carry phony identification with him, identifying them as Johnny Macklin and Fred. And then? Out in Boontown, that to create some wild fuss that'll get them picked up by the local police, something that'll make a big splash in the newspapers. And it's got to be so big that the local papers here will be sure to pick it up. Well, what should they do? I want you to give Waldo $500. Mm -hmm. And tell him he's to hold up a bank and put the money in the bank safe. Hold up a bank and put the money in the bank safe? Yes. Oh, that'll make the headlines all right. Naturally, I want you to make arrangements to have the bank cooperate. Well, I should hope so. On the quiet, of course. Check. In the meantime, I've got a three o'clock date with Gerard. And I hope he doesn't have a newspaper with him. Peterson, we've arrived. What time is it, Linda? Uh, 3.30, Mr. Valance. Very good. You understand your instructions, Peterson? I think so, Mr. Valance. Gerard has told this cane person to meet me alongside the trolley power station at half past three. But you will meet him and, of course, pretend that you are the key man in this deal. Yes, sir. Yes, you will also carry this bag. Okay. There's a Thompson gun in it which you will offer as a sample. I see. And, uh... If this cane proves to be a cop or something... Trust me, Peterson. Trust me. Okay, Mr. Valentin. And I'll be off with you. You mustn't keep Mr. Kane waiting. Been waiting long, Mr. Kane. Huh? Oh, yeah. Your eyes said... I know, that... I know, uh... I'm a little late. Sorry. You're the big boy. That's right, brother. Go ahead. You carry the ball. What do you mean? I'm a stranger in town, mister. I'm not taking no chances. You want to do business with me, go ahead and talk. Okay, okay. Touchy, ain't you? I got a sample here to show you. Now, uh, this here's our Thompson special. It's a rebuilt job, no identification. Are you crazy? Under... <laughs> what do you think I am, anyway? A baby? 
You trying to set up a pinch for me? Lay off, will you? I want to beat your head in. Do you know no better than to flash a Thompson gun up in the open where a hundred people could see us? Oh, gee, I... Get on your feet, punk. Take that bag and get out of here. Yeah, but I thought you... I don't do business with you. You're the big boy in this deal, and I'm the king of Siam. Hey, Gerard. I want a couple of words with you. What's the idea of sending that mush head to meet me at the power station? Hey, come of... right in, Mr. Kane. Hey, who are you? The name is Valence, Rodney Valence. This is Linda. How do you do, Mr. Kane? Hi. Permit me to shake your hand, sir. You positively thrashed poor Peterson. <laughs> he had it coming, Mr. Kane. He was clumsy. Hey, I'm beginning to get it. You're the big guy. That's quite so. He sent that mug to try me out, huh? We uh, have to be careful, Mr. Kane. Yeah, sure. Now, to get down to business, you spoke of 40 revolvers and a Thompson gun? That's right. And the price would be $5,000 on delivery. All firearms are guaranteed to be in the best working condition and warranted free of all identification marks. Okay, the price is all right. Where's the stuff? And at my plant, naturally, you couldn't expect me to carry all that around with me. All right, how do I get to the plant? We'll take you there this evening, Mr. Kane. Suppose we pick you up in front of Gerard's shop at, say, uh, 7 o'clock. waiting for you. Any luck this time? You bet. I finally located our manufacturer. Who is he? A man named Rodney Valance. I dropped off to check him on the way home. He runs Rodney Valance Incorporated, a firm that manufactures fireworks. Firecrackers, sky rockets, and stuff like that? That's right. Rodney's what they call the fire master, the man who designs the fireworks. But it so happens he also designs firearms for criminal use. But Nick, if you met him, why didn't you grab him? I didn't want to. Not until I've located his plant going to take me there tonight at 7. Good. Get hold of Sergeant Brady for me, will you? I want to make a few plans. Right. And let's hope that Rodney Valance doesn't read the wrong newspaper between now and then. If he does, you may have to start looking for a new boss. Linda! Linda, it's 6.45. Time to be on our way. Mr. Valance. Now, we've a busy night before us, Linda. There's Mr. Kane to be taken care of and... I... Linda, what's the matter? Mr. Valance, Gerard said Kane was a friend of Johnny Macklin's, didn't he? Mm, quite right. Johnny gave him the money to pay for his guns before he left town. Oh, Johnny didn't leave town. What's that? Johnny didn't pull off that job last night. Fred was killed and Johnny was caught. Let me see that paper. There. Johnny was caught by Nick Carter. Nick Carter? Well. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. You're a treasure. Although I don't think Mr. Nails Kane Carter will think so after we've finished with him tonight, huh? <laughs> Swiftly, Rodney Valance and Linda leave for their appointment with Nick, who waits in front of Gerard's store. We'll see what happens next in just a moment. And now for the conclusion of the case of the two-faced firemaster. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. It's ten minutes after seven. A long black sedan has just pulled up before Gerard's shop on 10th Avenue, and Nick Carter, the collar of his overcoat up close around his neck, has jumped in. Swiftly, the sedan starts its drive through the city. Uh, sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Kane. I hope you'll forgive me. Yeah, sure, that's okay. You know, just before I come here, I read in the paper about Johnny Macklin and Fred. No, oh, did you? Yeah, them crazy kids. Sure get themselves into the goofiest jams. You read what they did out in Boontown today? Boontown? Yeah, that's right. See on the paper. Read it to me, Linda. Now, oh, turn on the light. Hey. Two thieves identified as Johnny Macklin and Fred Gummer attempted to rob the Boontown Bank this afternoon, but for some unknown reason made the mistake of depositing $500 instead of taking any money. They... Mr. Valley. Yes, I heard. Very interesting, isn't it? 
Now, we'll go into it after we get to the plant. Hey, what's the matter, Valence? Uh, nothing at all, Mr. Kane. Just a little problem of conflicting newspaper stories we'll have to settle. Hey, it shouldn't bother you now, Mr. Kane. Okay, don't bother me. But there's one thing that does. Yeah? You've been driving this car around the streets like you're an eel. I don't like it. We're going to your plant, or is this a come on? Uh, merely a precaution to shake off anyone who might be tailing us, Mr. Kane. Thought you already tested me once. Wasn't that enough? I'm a careful man, Mr. Kane. So am I. Especially with five grand on me. Now look, we're at fifth and grand. Correct. If we was being tailed, we ain't no more. So now either we head straight for your place or I get out while I still got my dough. We're going there directly, Mr. Kane. All right, so where is it? It can't do any harm to tell you now, Mr. Kane. It's alongside the river at First Street. It's the Valence Powder House where most people imagine our uh, fireworks are manufactured. The Valence Powder House at First Street, right? Yes, that's right. We're on the level with you, Mr. Kane. But in five minutes, we're going to ask you a more serious question. Are you on the level with us? Well, here we are. Will uh, you get out, Linda? Yes, Mr. Vallon. Now you, Mr. Kane. Sure, pal. You should have let me help the lady out first, though. Hey. Don't move, Mr. Kane. Don't raise your voice, please. I won't, sister. Not with a gun on my back. Mr. Kane, I'll be honest with you. Up until the time you got into our car, I was positive you were Nick Carter. Nick Carter? <laughs> that joker. A certain item in the paper made us think so. But you showed us another story that seems to confuse the issue. To put it plainly, if Johnny and Fred are really in Boomtown, you're Nils Kane. But if they were captured last night in this city, you're Nick Carter. Look, if you think Walk you're gonna... into the warehouse, Mr. Kane. Or Carter. Go ahead. And you'll wait here until we can check the conflicting newspaper stories. Yeah? Yes. If you're Nils Kane, you'll leave with 40 revolvers and a Thompson gun. And our apology. If you're Nick Carter, you'll leave with a bullet in your heart. Okay. Be careful, Linda. I'll open the door. Come in, Mr. Kane. Oh, Mr. Carter. Okay. All right, Valance. What's Rach? What is it? Mr. Valance, we've been... You right. too, sister. Linda, you've got a gun. I'm going to use it, too. Ready to keep Valance covered. I'll grab the girl. That's All what right. you think, Mr. Nick. Give me that gun. I'll kill you with a... Linda, try yeah, to... Keep your hands up, Valance. Okay, Linda, if you want to play rough. Yeah. Nick, Nick, are you all right? I'm all right, Brady. In a half a second, oh, I'll... You're, you're... Drop that gun. There, that's better. You beast, I could... Keep them both covered, Brady. Right. I'll get the gun. Okay, that's that. Did you get Gerard and Peterson back at the store? I sure did. Then let's wrap up this case and go home. Well, Mr. Valance... Now, look, Carter, if you think... I of... don't think, Mr. Valance, I know. This is the beginning of a long and profitable relationship between you and a prison cell. Nick, I don't get it. What, Patsy? When you got into Valance's car, did you know where his plant was? No, I didn't have the slightest idea. Then how come Brady was waiting for you inside the plant? You said Valance shook off anybody who could possibly be tailing you. Mm hmm Patsy, a great many new devices were developed during the war. One of them is a very compact radio transmitter, small enough to go into a large pocket. Oh, then that's why you wore your overcoat. That's why. And that's also why I turned up the collar so that Valance and Linda wouldn't see the throat microphone I was wearing underneath. <laughs> oh, well, I'll be darned. All Brady had to do was listen to what you said to Valance. That's right. I said it was simple, didn't I? That's how he happened to be waiting for us. And thus ends that case. Oh, no, 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 not quite. What? What do you mean? And say, where are we going? Now, Patsy, don't tell me you've forgotten all about Waldo and Scubby. Why, Nick, they're still in Boontown, in jail. And that's where we're headed of course. After all, when they pulled off that crazy stunt of theirs and confused Valance and Linda, it gave me that extra five minutes I needed in order to save my life. Yes. <laughs> I guess the least you can do is to get them out of jail.
Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cudahy Packing Company, makers of new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Sergeant Brady is played by Ted Jewett. Script by Alfred Bester. Original music is played by George Wright. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war Old Dutch cleanser.